my God. Is that the faces of the future? Yeah. All right, all right. The next question I got for y'all um, before we jump into the Monday Rundown news is um, Rocket actually sent me this. It was a video of Grant Cardone and his brother. And if y'all know who Grant Cardone is, he's like a, a well-known entrepreneur in the States. He does like a real estate, all that stuff. And his brother made the comment that you have to leave your hometown to become successful. So I wanted to pose your question to everybody in the room. Um, is it easier to become more successful when you're outside of your hometown or should you stay where you're at to, to climb? But is it easier? If you're not on the, if you're not in LA or New York or yeah, New York or LA, um, I think that, I think that that serves true. What do you mean? Oh, uh, New York, LA or DC. I think that with New York and LA and like the DC area, I think that they all got like a different type of vibe where you're kind of there to hustle, especially when you meet people that are like you. But outside of that, you definitely got to move. I think that it gives think you... Even if you're in Atlanta, you got to move? Yeah. Atlanta's no good. What do you mean? I disagree. I feel like a lot of people come up in there... I in disagree their, because I feel like Atlanta would be a, a pretty decent spot to, like, go mm-hmm. ahead. Atlanta, Atlanta go... That's what I was, I was disagreeing but with. But you, I have yeah. a lot... Oh, okay. I have a lot yeah, of... Yeah, I have yeah. a lot I'm of, saying you don't have to leave Atlanta. If you're yeah, growing up in Atlanta, you don't think you got to leave. If you're growing up in Atlanta, nah, I wouldn't think you would have to leave there. No. I think... I mean, from the stories that I've heard from people that live over there specifically, like... It's not fun. It's not. It's not the great place because it's just very much. It's very much gives the idea of you have to be. You have to have some type of stain. You have to have some type of some type of clout to be over there and move. Like if you want to, if you want to live there, maybe for like college and stuff like that, it's cool to probably gain like a popularity. If you want to be like an influencer or something like that, or maybe if you're trying to get into music. But outside, genuinely, just assuming like a regular everyday person who's also black or as a minority, I would not, I think you'd have to move out of Atlanta. Even just for like business, say like a business person or, yeah. or, or entrepreneur or yeah. real estate, whatever, whatever you decide it is, you think it's, it's not, you're not, you couldn't flourish without being, I just, if you grew mm, up there? Nah, cause you, cause to me, I think that you end up getting adapted into that type of culture. Like for me, just from everything that I've specific, just, this is off of what I've just been told. Just because of how Atlanta is in a culture of you have to kind of flex a little bit. It's like, it puts you into a perspective where even if you may not even be doing it right now, you could still put a perception of that you're doing it now. Whether that in New York or L.A., people are gonna see you where they see you because there's only so many places you could be around. Outside I disagree. The I disagree. A lot of people be a lot of be, a lot of people be a lot of people be finessing and faking the funk when they in both yeah. the cities you just named on the yeah, regular. Yeah, but people fake the funk. But you also there's a certain love. There's a certain time and a certain area when you in those two places where you just kind of know where people are where people are at. Like you could say, I'm making my own grind in the bro in the Bronx. If you're not showing up to a Sony party, if you're not showing up to some of these, I disagree venues, with. That. I disagree. You're not that. gonna be seen the way that you think that you're seen. I disagree with that. Why? I disagree. There's plenty of people that don't pull up to those types of events, whatever. That have stain and have clout, especially in New York, bro. They don't pull up to none of that industry shit. But when you go to the street events or the streetwear streetwear events or or stuff that's not really mainstream or industry, bro, they their their, their clout with stain holds a lot of yeah, weight. People more more times than not in those cities. Those industry people are going to those events because that's how they find out who has the clout, who has the steam, and all of that but stuff. What I'm, but what I'm saying about it is that if people already have that clout, you're already going to be noticed by the industry before it even gets to a spot of you hosting events or you going to those places where everybody else is not. Like, the, the thing is, is that a lot of these people, when it comes to this grassroots ideas and things of that nature, like, a lot of these industry people are already on the scene peeping at. So when you see somebody that has a little bit of social clout, you, they already check. Mm-hmm. It's like if you go to... If you go to certain artists, not even talking just music, people who are in the industry, mm-hmm. and if they already have their eye on you, you already they already follow you. Like, that's a fact, bro. You know no, what I mean? No, they do already follow. And you. That's I'm what saying. I'm saying, I'm saying that's across the board, though. But to but to an extent, a majority of to a majority yeah. of people, if you have some type of clout and you're actually grinding and you're mm-hmm. actually on the map and people know you know you, mm-hmm. you're already like noticed a little. What do you consider? What do you what do you, feel, what do you consider? Know you know you. Um. People follow you. You've had a couple meetings. You've been in, you've been in situations where you are naturally getting invited to some of those events, not mm-hmm. because you get invited because you're influencer, because you actually put in the work for something. True, true. You know what I mean? It's like a prime example would be Ian Connor, right? Like when people were talking about Ian Connor, they were talking about Glenn Brown, um, Justine Sky. Like most of them were already consulting for like Supreme and all these other brands before they became who they were. Like no, Vino, true. So what I'm saying is that at that time, yeah. The internet, to an extent, saw them as, oh, Ian Connor's just an influencer guy, whatever. 
but he's already silent for ASAP Rocky. But he's you, already silent for a at, bunch of people. But you have to look at the time frame in which Ian Connor and them started popping off. That's when the internet influencer thing kind of really became a thing. That's why everybody's kind of behind in what they were actually doing. Like, yeah, they were doing stuff prior and didn't have really any clout on the net or anything like that. But you have to realize that time frame in the net, like people didn't really have clout like that, bro. And then even like with the Ian Connors and stuff, I mean. They, before they got, became consultants and stuff like that, or people knew who they were on the radar, like the people in the street that are True. that that are that the grassroots stuff, they have to talk about them before you even get on anybody's radar. I right. disagree Wait, because if you, you if you use that if we're using that specific example, the Tumblr kids that we like to call them, I'm just I'm not saying yeah. specifically for them. I'm saying if you just talk, if we're generally speaking about like you're saying pe- people having like their eyes on talent and stuff of that nature, they like did. people aren't gonna have their eyes on you or even take notice of you unless the everyday people aren't aren't fucking with masses. you. If that makes sense. The masses aren't already me- fucking with you. Bro. That's why I'm using Ian Connor and them as an example. Ian Connor and them, they just literally were just some niggas that was around. Ian Connor moved from Atlanta, right? And he was just in New York, and he just dressed kind of fly. He ended up linking up with the ASAP Mob. He yeah. ended up linking up with um with Virgil Abloh. That's when they were doing the Pyrex Vision shit. True, because you bring started, in like a in like a whole different yeah. perspective, bro. So Virgil Abloh is already known. Ab- Abloh is already known as a DJ. He's already yeah. a designer for Pyrex, right? Pyrex at the time was one of the biggest streetwear brands ever during the reconnaissance of fashion, whatever. I'm saying this to say, before Ian Connor even got to a Supreme, Virgil seen him. ASAP Mob seen him. And at that point, once he started wearing the clothes and Instagram really got popular, maybe like two or three years later, then we could say that, okay, yeah, it kind of looked like he's just grinding or doing whatever. But, but isn't, but, wouldn't, wouldn't you mm-hmm. consider Virgil already like, Virgil's part, so, so we're talking about different types of industry people, if that makes sense. Like, mm-hmm. I like Virgil is somebody who's ingrained in that street culture. He's on the ground. A lot of the people, that, a lot of people that are quote unquote in the industry, you're talking about they aren't on the ground the way, like the way the Virgils and stuff like that are, because that's what makes like them different in my opinion. But that's what makes like the Virgils and all them great is because they're literally mm-hmm. still ingrained and they keep those young people around them yeah. to point out, oh, this person's popping, this person's doing this. But, but in that, in that sense, you're not wrong. But what I'm also saying is put it in perspective like this. Right. During that time, during that time frame, mm-hmm. specifically for the New York for LA, yeah. that was the time when around people were looking for streetwear. They were looking for fresh ideas. Yeah, hundred percent. Obviously, with Virgil, you saw that. But what yeah. you also kind of saw in that same instance was you saw a lot of um, luxury brands trying to look for streetwear influencers too. That's why the whole Kanye situation was happening when he was screaming for, um, back in his Yeezus era. Right. He was screaming about that because y'all looking for streetwear influence. I damn near ran streetwear for a good 10, 12 years, but y'all treating me like I'm crazy. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like a lot of these brands started looking into that, but also at the same time, if you were in New York and you're doing the work already, Ian Connor wouldn't have gotten to the place where he was at if he was just there, just being whoever. He knew where he had to be. The same thing with Justine Sky, Glenn Brown, and all of them. Glenn Brown, to this day, he's a manager for the same dude that just produced for Drake. At the time... If you didn't know who he was, you wouldn't have known just because he was just a New York nigga that got flopped. True. But that was not the only thing that they did. Oh my God, is that the faces of the future?